Right everybody, this, uh, this video will explain how you can limit the travel of a linear actuator without necessarily using inbuilt limit switches. You can get uh, linear actuators with built-in uh, limit switches, but uh, I prefer a, you know, an external sensor uh, to limit the travel. So just let me show you the, the components here. There's a 24 volt uh, power supply up here. Then, uh, because the linear actuator is 24 volts, um, it's quite a powerful power supply. And then we, starting out here, the 24 volts is converted down to, to 12 volts in this small little, uh, well, I think it's about $5, small little uh, regulated power supply. And that gives a nice clean 12 volts to this circuit, which is a, basically, I think it's an Arduino kit actually, but it's, again, it's, four or five dollars um, that um, is an opto-isolated um, four relay board and basically you can have the triggers if I point at these you can have it negative edge triggered or positive edge triggered so basically that means that if the voltage reduces then it will trigger it can trigger or if a voltage increases it can trigger and that's important for this because I'm I'm using triggers based on these proximity sensors here and of course they will go high or low okay but I'll explain that in a bit more detail in a moment so basically this this board is just taking the inputs from some proximity sensors and then turning on some relays which are then coming over to this board controlling the the DC motor the linear actuator control board and again these are fairly cheap I think this was 10 or 15 dollars and it's a remote control here's the remote control there's a little remote control up and down buttons um, but basically this is a, a, a cheap and easy way of, of controlling a linear actuator it's got a power supply and then two wires go off to the linear actuator and it handles all the reversing and you can actually see in the wiring diagram here the power here and then the linear actuator goes across the motor terminals and then if you do connect them these are limit switch connections here on the board and I'm obviously using those because I'm using the proximity sensors as limit switches for this motor and you can see that I've just pushed a bolt through there and then uh, if you you can see on the actual PC printed circuit board here you can have interlock if you put these switches here look these dip headers here you can set this board to be interlocked which means it will it will run continuously rather than being in a kind of a jog mode which means you keep your button on it to to, to run the motors and this means it's going to wait for an interlock it's going to wait for these switches to tell the linear actuator circuit when to stop so i'll just go back to the the proximity sensors so the proximity sensors will obviously sense the presence of some material and that could be a hand or a bolt or metal or plastic or even water and then they will signals will come down here into these blue wires now all I've done is I've just put a hundred K resistors each side so actually these these pins would kind of in an equi equilibrium situation they'd kind of sit around six volts i.e. there's a hundred K resistor there 100k resistor there and then it, I've done this so it doesn't really matter if I use a PNP or an MPN uh, proximity sensor I can just put anything in really because the the board is sensing a voltage change up or down okay and you'll notice I've got only two circuits are active here you can see the blue wires triggering and the blue wires are, this, are the signal wires from the proximity sensors and the reason I've done that is so the relays aren't on when the when my linear actuator is up, just for this particular application. So at the moment, you can see from the LEDs that both of these both of these relays are active at the moment, but the linear actuator is actually static in the down position. Okay, and when I put the linear actuator up. 
you'll notice that and I'll just show you it going up, traversing up. You'll notice that if I do the same thing again, bring it down, you notice one of the relays is active. Then the down position, they're both active, which is my, it's, it's not normally in that state when it's down in my case. But when it's up, with my lid is closed, It basically means that the the uh, the relays aren't sitting there in the in the sun all day getting warm. Okay, so both relays are off at the moment. Okay, so if we go onto the onto the motor controller again, you can see the wiring diagram. And as I move the as I go up and down, you can see that the the interlocks LEDs are appearing. I'll do that again for you, so you can see the LEDs. There we go, and back down again. Now, of course, I can put these proximity sensors anywhere in the in the travel, and it gives a very repeatable it gives a very repeatable travel distance on the linear actuator, and it means it's also not going to the to the extent of its its travel again without any kind of limit switches in there. Okay, so just to say the components again, that's just a twelve volt uh, regulator that's uh, taking me down to twelve volts from the twenty four my circuit. I've got a four relay opto isolating board here that's edge triggered and I've set one of the edges uh, to be uh, low and then the rest are high. I'm in fact I'm only using two. The other one is high. Okay. Um, and then that's it really. So the proximity sensors are all wired in. That's all connected and then uh, it's all functional and ready to be put into a box and, uh, and wired properly. Thanks for watching. If you need any more information, then just uh, just see the link here and uh, just send me a link. Okay, and I'll uh, I'll try and reply to any questions about uh, the source of any of these components.